and it's already the final day here at Singapore Airshow. And it's never too late for introducing new locally made aerospace technologies. Good afternoon, my name is Leon. Welcome to ST Engineering, Engineering Your Future. What we're going to introduce to you now is actually drone net. We envisage that Singapore eventually become a drone city and we're going to use this drone net to actually accomplish our vision. What is drone net? Drone net is an end-to-end -end solution infused with multi-network of drones that have different kinds of sensors and payloads housed in a drone port itself that can be remotely operated and actually deployed, all controlled by a centralized drone hub where smart analytics takes place in the platform. What we have here in behind me is actually the draw port itself where all the things are being automated in the process itself. After the completion of each mission, it will go back to the draw port, change the battery and off you go for the next mission. There are various applications that can be used including security, surveillance, inspection of buildings and infrastructure and even light parcel delivery. So these are all actually the features that is possible. And we also built with safety in mind. The drones are, have embedded with all the avoidance collision capability to land precisely and also have, be able to hover at when you breach the Joe fence. So Joe fence is actually a virtual network to actually prevent it from actually exiting the, platform, the area of operations. Hi, uh, I'm Tong. Uh, I'm here to introduce you a uh, modernized U130 cockpit. Uh, what we do here is to upgrade an uh, analog uh, cockpit to a full digital glass cockpit for C130s. So the advantages of this uh, upgrade, as you can see, for analog uh, display, right, uh, there are many gauges and many dials, and you face a lot of issues such as uh, obsolescence issues and we have a component that is uh, so many to manage the space, everything. So in terms of digital displays, right, uh, it's more compact and it's more neater, less cluttered, and all the indications are uh, integrated into one displays, and you have much easier to manage all your spares. And uh, for the indications, right, uh, let's say for the engines indications, right, compared to the analog one, right, the digital, right, uh, straight away they give signals such as, such as the uh, amber and red warnings that immediately catches the uh, flight crew's attention so that they can take the necessary actions immediately. As compared to the analog one, they have to eyeball each and every one of the individual indicators. So this is one of the uh, advantages of an uh, upgrade cockpit. ST Aerospace has been exploring the concept of uh, autonomous uh, free tow and uh, we believe the industry will take a one-step approach by uh, implementing these uh, single pilot free tows through removing the co-pilot with an AI system and then added a safety net layer with a ground segment. The ground segment consists of a ground pilot is manning a fleet of uh, single pilot freighters of up to 12. So overall, this is what the concept of uh, uh, autonomous uh, freighter is about. So we, be we believe that the single pilot freighters is the way to go in uh, the future because uh, for the ease of certification and added assurance, the human pilot is still in the cockpit you know, to take over the uh, aircraft when the system fails. So on top of that, with a ground segment, it is another safety net layer that helps you know, in case that the pilot is uh, also not present or unavailable and the system is down. The ground pilot is able to take control of the aircraft and land the aircraft as safely as possible to the nearest airfield. My name is uh, Vincent Cotin, I'm a French national. Um, I've been in Asia for uh, a good 20 years now. And uh, Flyon is a young uh, Singapore startup set up two years ago to design uh, contra-rotative uh, UAVs. So we have uh, four partners there, uh, myself, a Belgian guy, Bruno, and two Singaporeans. The FL-18 Skyborg is a uh, turbine powered, so we have a turbine. And the particularism of uh, this machine is that it's a contra-rotative helicopter. Uh, we did choose this configuration uh, 
because of its uh, efficiency and uh, resistance to turbulence and uh, swirling winds. Basically, it's a 22 kg empty weight, uh, 50 kg maximum takeoff weight. We have a uh, three hours uh, autonomy of flight and uh, basically 30 kilometers uh, range. Primarily, I would like to see it as a life-saving machine, uh, search and rescue, uh, disaster recovery. We have a large uh, payload. I don't know if you are. Uh, we have a large bay here where we can put uh, medicine, first aid kits, um, designation, smoke canisters, and stuff like that. So it's really uh, search and rescue, disaster recovery. That's what our key missions. Um, Firefighting, being in Southeast Asia where it's uh, a, very big, uh, a very big subject, is as well something we're looking at. Uh, the machine being very uh, stable and immune to uh, turbulences, it's, uh, it's a well, good fit for uh, coordinating of uh, firefighting uh, ground forces. Being in, uh, in Singapore, uh, we have access to a lot of government support uh, in uh, research and development. We are in a very conducive environment, so we have already started to work on the next uh, machine, the next fly-on, which will be a 3.2 meter diameter. Now we are at 2.4, and we'll have a 100 kg maximum takeoff weight. So it's a bigger machine, but the same architecture. I am Shane from Singapore University of Technology and Design. Um, I'm a PhD student and one of the research projects that I'm working on is this um, rotate, auto rotating device here. So what it does, uh, what we inspired from is the maple seed. So the maple seed, when it falls down, it spins around and it uses the gyroscopic stability of that to um, achieve you know, movement and greater distances rather than just dropping down. So we are using the principle. So um, this is a prototype that you can drop from an airplane and then uh, maybe you can drop a bunch of them together and then they will all go down and swarm to a location. So you can actually control the location of the drop. And because it can carry a small payload, it can be a sensor and it will auto-rotate to that location. So we are using um, some, we're borrowing some principles from helicopter mechanics. So we are using this cyclic pitch control to achieve our direction control. So this thing over here has, um, uh, each blade is individually controlled by a servo and um, every rotation it will change its angle of attack and that how, that's how it achieves the direction control. What we want to do is we want to make it into um, a lot, so right now there's two, two wings right now, so maybe we can like, try to put like three or four wings and we want to achieve a separation mid-flight so they would all separate into single wings and carry out their missions on their own. Hi, I'm a PhD student from SUTD and I'm working on this project called the Transformable Hoovering Rotorcraft. So it's a hybrid UAV which has uh, two modes, uh, hoovering and uh, fixed wing flight. So in hoovering mode, it's uh, kind of uh, inspired by the monocopter aircraft, which is uh, inspired by the maple seat. So in hoovering mode, it's, uh, it uh, spins, uh, spins its entire body to achieve flight, to achieve lift, and it can uh, transition to fixed wing mode by changing the angle of the, the wings. We are still trying to improve the control of the platform. Let's say uh, during the hovering mode, there's actually, uh, it's actually electronically stabilized. 